Business, sport and political leaders are paying tribute to John Elliott after the colourful figure who dominated the headlines in the 80s died in hospital. His son, broadcaster Tom Elliott, is urging the Carlton Football Club to once again embrace the man who led them to two premierships. Tony Jones has the story. Rarely has an Australian life been as successful, as colourful or as controversial as the life of John Dorman Elliott. No comment today. I'm watching the football today. I hope Carlton win. Business, football and politics. John Elliott made an almost unrivalled contribution to all three. His other role was that of dad. But I think, to be honest, the most important thing was his family. He had a lot of life lessons for us. You know, make your own way in the world, do your own thing, don't expect anything from me. His business brain took him to the top of the corporate world. Elliot's control of Elders IXL transformed the foods manufacturer into a giant, adding CUB to the growing stable and taking Fosters to the world. His business acumen had him once touted as a future Prime Minister. The party wasn't in good shape federally and there was a push to get him into Higgins. Already installed as federal president of the Liberal Party, parachuting Elliot into the safe seat of Higgins would have been the first step to the lodge. Oh, well, certainly going for the leadership. The man who currently holds the key to the lodge, Scott Morrison, today saying, big lives always have their critics, make their fair share of mistakes, but mostly there is something about them that capture their times. John Elliot was a larrikin and a larger than life figure, a very proud Victorian who made a huge impact on the sporting world, on the corporate world and on the political world. He was part of that generation of the 1980s, the entrepreneurial generation. They really revved up the business community. Sport also formed a huge part of John Elliott's life. Melbourne Cup Day had him rubbing shoulders with royalty, a prince and princess on this day in 1985. But it was at Princess Park where Elliott's true sporting passion was to be found. Carlton. We are the For 20 years, he presided over his beloved Blues, celebrating two premierships. If we lost, he wouldn't come down the rooms. If we won, it was front and centre. So he demanded success, and I suppose that's what rubs on on all us blokes that knew him in the early days. The description of John would be that uh, the Carlton blood, in a real sense, ran through his veins. But Elliot's days at Carlton didn't end well when the club was penalised heavily for salary cap breaches. He was to be thrown from offers by his one-time lieutenant Ian Collins and his name stripped from a grandstand. It was one of football's more inglorious downfalls. Regardless, he remained a true blue right to the end. I'd love the Carlton Football Club to do something. I know his departure from Carlton wasn't under the best of circumstances, but he absolutely loved the place with a passion. Elliot's personal life also had its upheavals, not least when he sold his Turak mansion, unbeknownst to his wife Amanda. Apparently something I wasn't involved in, so it's all a bit upsetting to me. He was a dream for cartoonists, that large nose accentuated on sketch pads right around the country. But the satire didn't end there. Pig's ass! <laughs> Elliot was keen to set the record straight when it came to that now famous catch cry. I never said it once in my life. In remembering John Elliot, it's near impossible to shy away from the controversies his quest for success garnered. But he was a fiercely devoted Australian who, in his heyday, might well have led the country. Although one suspects, as he slipped away last night, John Dorman Elliott did so with not one regret. I don't spend any of my life worrying about what, what might have been. Tony Jones, Nine News.